you had your Bibles open, uh, if you would look in Genesis 40, we're going to look today about enduring through life's injustice. Anybody here ever had to deal with injustice in their life? Maybe no fault of your own. Uh, you know, it's one thing when I pay for mistakes that I've made. I guess I kind of assume that's going to be part of it. But it's another thing when I endure injustices that I am not part of. And that's, that's what we're going to look at today. And we're going to look at, we're still with our, our, our character Joseph. If you remember last week, we had looked that he kept his integrity. And most of you know that if you go to your work and you work with integrity or you, or you guide your home with integrity, usually you're rewarded. You might be rewarded with promotion, might be rewarded with a raise, or might be rewarded with deeper love relationship for those in your home. Usually you are rewarded for integrity. Does everybody agree with that? But that wasn't Joseph's case. He kept his integrity and was falsely accused of rape. I was reading that 19% of the United States incarcerated individuals are incarcerated for the charge of rape. And it got me thinking, wonder maybe if there weren't some of those individuals that were falsely accused. Now my, uh, my train of thought is not to correct social injustices, that's not where I'm heading with this, but what I am talking about is what happened to Joseph. And if you would look at verse 1 and 4, even though he was falsely accused, he kept his integrity. Uh, this is a quirky little saying that was taught to me, and I've tried to incorporate it in my life. I had an individual just yesterday tell me that, 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 that this, this same saying that they remember me uh, sharing with them. But we're going to see what Joseph follows, and, and listen to me very carefully. It is always right to do right. Amen? Even if you're not rewarded for doing right, it is always right. So Joseph did right. But look what happens. Look at verse 1 and 4. And it came to pass that the butler, uh, the king of Egypt, and his baker had offended their lord, the king of Egypt, and Pharaoh was mad against the two of the offers, against the chief of the butlers and against the chief of the bakers. And he put them in the ward in the house of the captain and the guard into the prison, the place where Joseph was bound. Uh, underline highlight that, was bound. And the captain of the guard charged Joseph with them, and he served them, and they continued a season in a war. Oh, my goodness. Uh, is there something to unpackage here? Uh, uh, if, you, if you like to flavor your food with onions, and if you're a Christian, why wouldn't you? Uh, 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 you, 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 know, you know for a fact that no matter how many layers of that onion you peel off, you still got onions. And I'm going to share with you in verse 4, no matter how many layers I peel off, we still got theology. Verse 4 is packed with theology. And, and I want you to look at, at verse 4. First, the captain of the guard charged Joseph with them. I was left in chapter 39 being told that Potiphar was the captain of the guard. I am told that Potiphar sent Joseph to prison. I am under the uh, thought pattern that Potiphar may knew that Joseph was falsely accused. Because Potiphar, the one who had Joseph sent to prison, now promoted him in charge of two of the prisoners. So, so we see that. Now keep, keep, keep going through here. But I want you to look what Joseph did. He served them. Are you kidding me? Who does that? We're talking about a man who was falsely accused and placed in prison, and yet, giving the role of leadership, he served two fellow prisoners. Do you see what I'm saying? These gentlemen were no... They were equal or under Joseph. If you agree, that, say amen. But he served them. You know, I, I know that I'm the only one who would fit this right now, but... Uh, especially in our culture, when we hear so much uh, of bullying and, and, and taking over congregations from the pulpit, do you know what the Bible described that a pastor should be a servant leader? 
You don't serve me, I serve you. That's what the Bible says. But yet we hear church after church where the pastor becomes the, the bully of the pulpit and demands that everyone serves him and we know the damage it's caused from that. But yet we see here that, that Joseph, in prison, now giving a leadership role, serves two other prisoners. And I want to share with you, he is bound. It, I read to you earlier. Now, Joseph now is about 28 years old. Now, I, I know Jim Lilly very well. And when Jim Lilly was 28, if he was dealing with injustice and some bubba told me to treat two people kindly who were equal to me or under me, it ain't happening, all right? So now we got a guy, not only uh, do we have integrity, but we have a man who has put himself below those that were below him. Uh, now, I, I don't know about you, I'm confused about the fact how he did not commit a sin against his master, but he paid as if he did. I've read about another man that happened to, and his name was Jesus Christ, amen? The Bible says he went to Calvary, and he died for mine and your sins, even though he did not sin. You see, the servant model, uh, uh, wife serving husband, husband serving wife, children serving family, uh, 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 leadership serving, uh, uh, you know, the employer serving employees, employees serving fellow employees, all this servant model is most like Jesus Christ, the greatest servant of all. But, but let's continue. Now, uh, I don't know about you, but I've, I've been, I have never been in a circumstance quite this dire, but God has, through His providence, put me in a few difficult situations. And I, am, I have to admit, I am not uh, a Joseph all the time. And sometimes when you get in those situations, now I may be speaking to a Joseph today, there may be a Joseph sitting in these chairs, maybe a Joseph tuned in in that camera, maybe a Joseph listened to the radio. I want to share something with you. There's a truth in Joseph's story that, that, that is the key to the story. Uh, if you look back in Genesis 39 and read verse 20 and 23 with me, it's easy in periods like this to want to know where God is. Have you ever had a bad situation and wondered where God is? Have you ever sat and said, Hey, God, where are you at? Well, I want you to look where God was in Joseph's situation. And Joseph's master took him and put him into prison, a place where the king's prisoners were bound, and he was there in prison. But the Lord was with Joseph. Where was he with Joseph at, class? In prison, amen? We looked last week. Remember Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? Hey, some of you uh, put those names in your baby books, man. They're cool names. Uh, 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 but, but, but remember what they said? Remember what happened? Uh, you know, they, they were told to bow to this brazen image, and they said, we don't do that kind of stuff. We're Christian. We only bow to Jesus. And they said, well, you're going to go in fire. And they said, well, we're not too crazy about going in fire, but we would rather choose fire here than compromise our stand. And all of a sudden, the king looks in the fire. He's pretty ticked off, by the way, if you recall. He wanted that fire harder than it had ever been. And all the people that threw them in were burnt. And, and all, we had all this uh, crisis. But when he looked in there, he said, hey, do we put three people in the fire? And they said, well, you know, we did. He said, I'm seeing four. And the fourth is like the Son of God. Amen? And so when you're going through the fire and you're going through the crisis, He has not abandoned you. He's walking right with you. Amen? You know, the, the crisis situations I'm in, I handle them differently based on who's with me. And, and, and so that, that, we, we know that Jesus is with us as believers, so all my Josephs, and I may have a few here, God is still with you. 
God has not abandoned you. And, and so we see, uh, uh, but let's look at Joseph's conditions. For some of you to say, well, Joseph was able to handle that because, by the way, by the way, he was a, a, a given leadership in the prison. Can I share with you what his prison conditions were? Look in verse 15 of chapter 40. Look in verse 15. For indeed I was stolen away out of the land of the Hebrews, and here also have I done nothing that they should put me into the dungeon. It's been close to 18 years ago, I guess about 17 plus. Uh, Miss Sheila and, and I and my brother and, and sister-in-law uh, my brother and I were teaching in Bible Institute in Malaga, Spain, and uh, the format was uh, they all had day jobs, and so we taught night class, literally, and so during the day, we would, we would check things out in Malaga, so we went to this castle, uh, Moore's Castle, and while we were there, uh, they showed us the dungeon. Now, nobody was in the dungeon, but I looked down in the dungeon. The dungeon, was, it was cold. Uh, it was dreary. It was, it, it was awful looking. And that was the dungeon. That's where the prisoner stayed. In, and it was just like this, this hole in the ground, literally. Now, I have spoke several occasions uh, to in jails and prisons. And, 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 uh, and I'm not criticizing this, but I, in all of those, the conditions have been pretty, pretty good. I wouldn't want to have been one of the prisoners. But, but to be honest, I wouldn't want to have been incarcerated, but to be honest with you, when I viewed those incarcerated, uh, they, they had clean clothing, uh, the floors were clean, uh, the furniture was nice, uh, we even you know, went into a sanctuary to have our services. The conditions, uh, I'm sure, aren't ideal to be incarcerated, but these conditions were dreary. And so, so we see this. How do you think you would handle this situation? Let's stop right now. We're going to do something different. I'm going to get the microphone. I'm going to pick one of you up, and you've got to answer. Now, now that your hearts came back, I'm not going to do that. But how would you handle it? How would I handle it? I want you to put this in your notes. Suffering always. I didn't say sometimes. Suffering always changes us. It will change some of us to the better and some of us to the worse. But you cannot have suffering and it not make a change in your life. Joseph, at 17, was a pampered mommy's boy, daddy's favorite, and God intended for Joseph to be prime minister of Egypt, and to get there, Joseph needed a little change of character. Amen? Suffering will change all of us. Uh, so, um, but Joseph is willing to help his fellow prisoners. While you're in Genesis 40, Look in verse 8 with me. And, and Joseph comes to his, his, the, the two gentlemen that he's in charge of, and they're sad. And, and he takes notice of that. I, I, I found something out here. Uh, most of us, when we're falsely accused, we become so obsessed with ourselves, we don't care about anyone else. Do you agree with that? How in the world class is the church of Jesus Christ going to affect the, the, the culture and affect the community we live in unless we have genuine concern for others? Are you with me? Don't think we're going to open the door and they're going to run in and say, I've heard about you guys. But I'm telling you right now, if you would sit down with one in your office cubicle and you would minister to them in their hurt condition, they will realize how real you are and all of a sudden it becomes that reality of who you are and you're really concerned. All of a sudden they believe that your Christ really is concerned.
But look in verse 8. And they said on him, We have dreamed a dream, and there is no interpreter of it. Interpreter of dreams. I don't really want to wade into dreams. I got some viewpoints. Some, most of them probably wouldn't benefit my sermon. Uh, 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 but, uh, but in this category, we're going to see that Joseph gets involved in their dreams. You know what? If I'm in prison and I'm bound in a dungeon and two, a couple guys tell me they dream, I don't care. But Joseph did. He cared about their dreams. He cared about how they felt. Now, now listen, class, I'm not talking down to anybody, but, you know, the Bible tells me that the broad road is heading to destruction. Most of the names you read in an obituary are went to hell. My next question is, does it bother you? How comfortable the church of Jesus Christ talks about the destruction of others. Matter of fact, I've heard some pastors, and I hate to say it, I love my brothers in the pulpit, but I've heard some of them, they almost like they're gleeful. I don't want any person ever in my circle to go into the devil's hell. Do you? I want redemption in people's hearts. I want salvation. I want people to experience the love of Jesus Christ. Don't you? Hey, that's what motivates me. I'd have quit this thing a long time ago and went back to coal mines if it wasn't for something like that that motivated my heart. I want to see people's lives change to Jesus Christ. And I hope you do too. We live in a culture that's, that, 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 that's violent and angry and has all these other things, and it's our natural reaction to want to get violent and angry back but it helps no one. And the, the, the lack of, uh, of integrity by the Christian community is damaging. I don't care how much money you have. If you don't have integrity, you are poor. I don't care what position you have at work. If you don't have any integrity, you are bankrupt. Our, 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 our Sunday school teacher talked to us about without love how, how bad a situation we are. And I agree with that. But I'm telling you, if you don't have integrity, then, then, then you're lacking to the point that, you, that you're in need. You need a life support. I had a friend that had to be put on life support. He's alive today because they put him on life support. It means what it says. The gospel is life support. If you agree with that, say amen. But the interesting thing about Joseph, and, and I am a student of the Bible, as you might assume, I have found no scriptural evidence that Joseph gave up his integrity and in his path from slavery through prison, a period of 17 years. I see not one passage where it mentions him giving up any of his integrity. Wow. Wow. We can all serve God when things are going well. When you get the bonus at work and come home and tell your wife how great God is, you both smile and embrace and talk about your great God. Uh, that, 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 that is a nice position to be in. But what do you do when you get the bad letter or bad call and you're sitting in a living room? Are you still talking about a good God? Or did God change with you all of a sudden? You see, Joseph said God was good even though his situation wasn't good. There's a great difference there. Great difference. But, but, but then he goes on and he interprets their dream. You know, there's most of my dreams, I don't know about you, but most of my dreams, are, they're kind of quirky. And the last thing I want to do is tell you guys about them. Amen? Miss Sheila and I, sometimes that's our humors over coffee. We'll talk about our dreams. I had a dream one time, I will tell you this one. I had a dream one time that a bear was after me. And I mean, I was losing it in that dream. Uh, this big old black bear, and he wouldn't leave me alone. And Sheila went away the next morning and said, you had the covers going everywhere. What were you doing? So I actually I was running from that bear in my dream, amen? That boy wouldn't leave me alone. Uh, uh, but, you know, I, that's kind of my dreams. Usually too much pizza dreams and too much this. 
But these dreams were prophetic dreams. Do you see what I'm saying? These dreams were prophetic dreams. So let's look at them. Let's look at them. Let's examine them real quick. Uh, verse 9. And the chief butler told Joseph, uh, he said, In my dream there was a vine before me, and the vine were three branches, and it was, though it budded, and blossoms shot out of it, and clusters of grapes. And Pharaoh's cup was in my hand, and I took the grapes and pressed them into Pharaoh's cup, and I gave the cup to Pharaoh. Okay, so this boy's dreaming. He's picking some grapes and, 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 and processing them and giving the cup to Pharaoh. Look what Joseph tells him. And Joseph said, this interpretation of it, in three branches, or actually three days, and within three days Pharaoh shall lift up thy head and restore thee unto the place, and thou shalt deliver Pharaoh's cup into his hand after the former manner when thou was his butler. Now the butler got good news. I love good news. I, I, I don't, uh, I, I love good news. Don't you? When's the last time you found good news? Well, listen to the news. I mean, they must sit around all day dreaming up dreary stories, right? You know, 47 lashes with a knife and a murder and this and that. And, and uh, uh, it's just, just dreary. It's dreary, but I love good news. The butler's got good news. But I want you to look what Joseph asked the butler. He said, but think of me when it's well with you. I think about this. I had a gentleman one time, he, he, uh, uh, he was laying in a bed, and his health condition was terrible, and he said, if I get out of this bed, I'm going to come to church, I'm going to serve Christ. I said, now, that's between you and God. He's out of the bed. I don't know where he's at. Have you noticed when, what you can promise when you're down? If I get through tonight, I'll never drink again. If, 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 I, if, I, if, I, if, if I get home, I'll never sneak out again. If I do this, you know, we're in a dire situation. If God will relieve it, I'll never do it again. And all of a sudden you get relieved, and what happens? You forget the dire situation. And you head right back to where you were. Isn't that the oddity? You know, that's one of the sad things about addiction. People in addiction aren't happy about their addiction, but they get kind of cleaned up from addiction and head right back into the addiction. Addictions are powerful. We shouldn't talk down to people. We should pray for people. They're powerful. But, but, and your addiction can be many things, right? It doesn't have to just be drugs or alcohol or, or something like that. It can be many things. Uh, but, but, but we see what's going on. And now, now Joseph did not operate outside the realm of reality. What did he tell everybody? I'm in a dungeon, man. I'm going to tell you, you can recognize your situation is bad, but you've got to also recognize your God is in your situation. But don't, don't, don't give me this game. I, I, I've, I've listened to it. I've even done it. But, I, you know, it seemed like some brother, you know, he's feeling good. Hey, when I'm feeling good, my preaching can be pretty arrogant. And I say that with humility, believe it or not. How many times have I been in the situation, and I've told that lady right there, I would never do that. Some minister's going through something. Boy, if my ministry ever had that, I, I, I wouldn't do it. Only to do it. Amen? I've had ministers suffering through situations and call and tell me, and I would get off because my ministry was going well at the time and everything was going well. And I told Sheila, I wouldn't stay in the church if that happened. And guess what? It happened in this church, and I stayed right in that office. The truth of the matter is most of us don't know what we'll do until we face it. Do you agree with that? Amen? Quit spouting off what you'll do because you'll just embarrass yourself when you fail. But he recognized that he was in a bad circumstance, but he stayed true. Now, though God had Joseph uh, enduring through this, Joseph didn't recognize it, but God knew it wasn't going to last forever. Amen? He used to pack the kids in the car, and we'd go down to Myrtle Beach and come back. 
don't know what we were thinking. Amen. <laughs> 14 hours with two kids that want to know if we're there or that before we have even left South Carolina coming back. And, uh, but there was no concept in their little hearts that we could endure 14 hours. It seemed like they were stuck in the van for two weeks. But we'd pull in the driveway, they'd all get out, and the trip was over. I don't know what you're enduring right now. Can I tell you something? God has a start and finish to everything. Are you with me? Psalms 30, verse 5 says the following. Write this down in your notes and look, read it for yourself later. We being may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. I tell you what, God has alleviated situations in all of our life, and isn't it something, no matter how much we cried, no matter how many knees we got scarred, no matter how sore we were doing it, now we're joyous, it's over. It's joyous, it's over. And what Joseph didn't realize, in two more years, God was going to bring him out of that prison and it was going to be better than he could ever imagine. Next week, the sermon is rags to riches. We all love a rags to riches story, amen? And next Sunday, we're going to cover that exact subject, how Joseph went from rags of prison the Prime Minister of Egypt. I want to ask you a question. Do you think for a second Joseph thought that two years from now I'm going to be running the country? If anybody thinks that, say amen. There is no way. He thought, I am going to die in this prison. I've had circumstances that I thought I was going to deal with all my life. And now you have to kind of prime me to get me to even remember those circumstances. I'll be like, oh yeah, I went through something like that. Right? Amen? So, so, so let's keep going. I want to talk to you about something. And I know what you're thinking. The Bible says we're more than, than conquerors. The Bible calls us victors. I got a question for you. How can we be winning if it always feels like we're losing? Amen? Do you feel like you're winning right now? My junior year in high school, I played for a team. We won every game. I know what winning feels like. I had somebody say, you think the team was pretty good? Well, we beat everybody. I guess we were. I know a little bit what winning feels like. The Bible tells me I'm a winner, but some days I, I, I don't feel like I'm a winner. You? Some days I feel like I'm a loser. How, how, are we, how are we going to fix this, class? If you believe the Bible is inerrant without mistake, say amen. amen. The Bible says that you are more than a conqueror, that you have experienced victory through Jesus Christ. You are a winner, but yet we all feel at times like we're losing, don't we? If I'm a winner, how come... We got to deal with church mess. If I'm a winner, how come we got to uh, watch the books? If I'm a winner, how come we got to chase after people all the time? If I'm a winner, why do we got to have discipline? If I'm a winner, you see where we're going at in the same way in your life. Joseph was a winner, but it sure didn't feel like winning for him. Let's keep going. Let's, let's bring this thing to a close. There was another dream there. Look in verse 16. And I want to talk to you about telling the truth in love even when it is painful. So Joseph told uh, the butler, hey, you're going to be restored, everything is going to be fine. And all of a sudden we had another there. We had the baker. The baker had a dream too, and his was prophetic. And he had just heard the good news of the butler's dream. He couldn't wait to tell Joseph his dream. Amen? He thought he was... He, listen, so, so read with me, if you would. Verse 16. 
when the chief baker saw the interpretation was good. Do you see what it said? He was excited, man. This bro down here interprets dreams, and they're all a good thing. This boy was the first name it, claim it individual. You with me? This, this boy was looking for a Mercedes when God intended for him to have a Chevrolet. But let's keep moving. He said unto Joseph, I also had a drink. I had three white baskets on my head, and the upper basket was all manner of meats for Pharaoh, and the birds did eat them out of the basket upon my head. Now Joseph swallowed hard and interpreted his drink. This is the most difficult thing to do as a believer. Not all deliveries are positive. Do you understand that? And look what he said. And Joseph answered and said, This interpretation, the three baskets are three days. Boy, this boy's breathing hard. Remember the three days earlier? I'm getting out here in three days. He's all excited. And within three days shall Pharaoh lift your head from off thee. What? He shall hang thee on a tree, and the bird shall eat the flesh from off thee. That's a little different than the butler's dream, amen? Eh, now, on the surface, it almost seems cruel that Joseph delivered that message. It could have been easier for Joseph to say, oh, I'm sorry, there, I, I can't figure this one out. You know, I think I would have been tempted to do that. I wouldn't want to hurt this old boy, so I'd have been like, I, I'm not very good at dreams. I, I, I'm not sure if I even know what I'm talking about. But then the Holy Spirit got a hold of my heart. If you knew for a fact, listen to me, if you listen to me, say amen. If you knew for a fact, you only had three days to live, do you think there's a chance you might live differently those three days? Is there a chance, maybe, just maybe, the fact that you got to face eternity, maybe there was some repentance took place? I'm telling you something. I, I, this is honest. I'm not feeling sorry for myself. I'm a big boy. I can take care of myself, okay? I'm not one of those whiners that's always wanting somebody to cover my back. I can take care of myself. But having said that, it is very difficult in the culture we live in, to just solely come up here week after week after week and deliver the true inherit word of God. But I'm here to tell you, it may not be what always you want to hear, and it may not be what the, those people on the radio want to hear, but the only way you can get right with God is to hear from God. Amen? And so Joseph... That delivery wasn't cruel. It was the most gracious thing he could say. He was basically saying, bro, you got three days. Let's make things right. And there may be somebody here that you might have three days. Can I say something else? There may be somebody I'm speaking to right now, and you got three hours. The Bible tells us over and over and over that our life's going to end, and yet we're so shocked when it does. I'm not excited about my life ending, but I'm telling you this much, because somebody was willing to stand in a box and deliver the gospel, and the Holy Spirit got in my heart and said, you better get your life right, bro. I know now to be absent from the body's presence of the Lord. Amen? I'm telling you, even though these stories are so contrast, all the butler did was go back into Pharaoh, worshiping frogs and flies and all lice and all this other stuff. That's all he went back. He went right back into the world where it was all nothing but sin. He got cleaned out of the prison, got a shower, and went right back into the same culture that he left. 
But the baker, on the other hand, he had three days prepared to leave this earth. The Bible doesn't tell us, but it's, I wonder and I hope that he said, hey, this is real. I need to get my heart right. You know, telling the truth at least gave him three days to repent. And I want to end this sermon with this. We must be, all of us, not pastors, but every one of you, if you're a born-again believer, you must tell the truth and love for the benefit of the listener. Amen? If I went to my doctor and he did an x-ray or she did an x-ray and found that there was a cancer in my body. And she said, Pastor Jim's a good guy and he's, he's always laughing and I don't want him not to laugh. And so she looks at me and said, everything's great, best physical you ever had. I want to ask you a question. Did she do me a favor? Listen, I get it. You have friends that may not want to hear what you've got to say. You've got to package it in love. You've got to pray around it. You've got to prepare your heart for it. And you've got to be genuine. But there's a whole culture. There's people that I will never meet that you're with every day. And they need Jesus. And the only way they're going to find Jesus is for the truth to be packaged in their ears and go to their heart with love. I, I, some, I guess they're well-meaning, but I'm not talking about some placard. I'm not talking about getting in somebody's face. Hey, I'm a Christian, and that offends me when people do that to me. I was in an airport, and some guy got in my face and told me I need to repent and get ready. And I, I appreciate that he cared about me, but I was like, hey, bro, this, is, this isn't working for me, all right? Get ready. And Joseph made a difference. I, I won't have time to go there, but I want you to read Job chapter 12. And Job was talking about the injustice of life. And you know what he said? He said, God controls the justice and the injustice. In the end, it's all God. I want to get there, don't you? I want to get like Job. I want to get to the point where everything happens in our life, where every, every situation Sheila gives me, I want, I want to get to the point where I say, Sheila, it's all God. You say, well, oh, you're a pastor. I'm sure that's in your home. No, you know, you don't have to give her truth serum either. She'll tell you. That, bro, that boy's off his rocker sometimes. You know what I'm talking about? But wouldn't it be, what, what, how can we get there? The only way we can get there is say God is in charge of justice and God's in charge of injustice and God's in charge of us, so it's all God. You agree with that, amen? Amen, amen. all heads bowed. Father, we thank you so much for this day. We thank you for those that you have gathered here. And Lord, we ask you to be with us. Help us as we deal with injustices. Lord, help us in our life. And we ask all this in Jesus' name, amen. Take your hymnals and stand one more time.